So you're a renegade now. Hardly. You're the Lorenzo Lamas of the 21st century. <laughs> How does that feel? I prefer to think of myself as snake eater. Okay. <laughs> the other Lorenzo Lamas role. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> a little from column A, a little from column B. A touch the touch. Yeah. Do you, uh... This feels so weird. Can I stand? I can't. Yeah. Do so you want me to stand? Yeah, let's both stand. Should we paint? What should we do? Let's just stand awkwardly like this. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> should we say something or just stand? Just conduct the fucking interview, dude. <laughs> um, so... Yourself a renegade? No, man. You asked me that. Move to the next one. Okay. <laughs> I really don't. I have never considered myself a renegade at all. It's just weird when people are like, oh, you're fucking against the system. It's, it never occurs to me as that. It just occurs to me. That's the only thing I know how to do. Not very talented. That's all I could do. Is this. I point to the screen that didn't show our shit. Um, but I, that's all I know how to do is the stuff I've done. And if that makes me a renegade, then awesome. Well, maybe we can talk about that. We <laughs> a security blanket? I'm tactile. I'm really tactile. <laughs> so maybe what we can talk about then, in terms of maybe like the idea of like renegades in your movies, mm -hmm. because when I watch your movies, I see you know one way of looking at being a renegade is the idea of you know guys who you know, they feel like they're sort of stuck inside this box of their lives and they want to make a break with that and yeah. do something else. And that's yeah. something that comes up in your movies over and over again, right? Yes. So can you talk a little bit about that, please? Absolutely. Okay. What, the aspect that movies are filled with characters who want to be something else? Yeah, and just where that comes from, that theme. I mean, that is in so it many... It comes from wanting to be gay. Very bad. <laughs> very, very bad. And then where the tactile part comes Absolutely. from. Absolutely, the touching of men. <laughs> I'm afraid if I do it, though, the kids won't think I'm cool anymore. I'm trying to slowly weed kids into the fact that I'm a cocksucker. <laughs> a lot of movies. Like, one by one, we take kids' his clothes off and make a lot of, like... Game type jokes and shit. And one day I'm gonna drop the hammer. You noticed that. that I caught too. One day I'm gonna drop the hammer and just flat out walk out on the camera and just be like, zip. <laughs> and then it will be like, oh, no, exactly. Oh, makes sense. <laughs> makes perfect sense. Every movie was about that kind of. <laughs> yeah, that was the alternate ending to Chasing Amy. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Cold and I'm a germaphobe. So I'm gonna give you. Well, my kid don't use that excuse. My kid had a cold too, so I'm all set. Okay. Ah. All right, fine. In that case, <laughs> um, you can keep it up. Though. You can keep it up. Though. Like you do it, then you stop. Come on. You really not just make out with me anymore. I just wanted a really friendly interview. <laughs> <laughs> I think it qualifies. Well, you know the. Uh, <laughs> Talking about the uh, sort of the, the uh, male relationships bordering on almost homosexual relationships. Yes. Uh, the you know it gets to something else in your movies. The the very sort of you know I don't know how you feel about the word bromances. I love it. You do yeah, yeah, because yeah. I feel like you you haven't gotten enough credit in this field because I really feel like your early films really sort of plumb this area. Plumbing jokes apparently being on my mind after your story, right. but you know what I mean like. There's so many of them now, and it's like, oh, we're in this very moment where everyone's talking about guy relationships and bromances. And I feel like you were doing it in your little niche here mm. for so long, and now it's kind of expanded into the mainstream. Do you, do you, do, what do you think about that? I agree. I agree completely. Yeah, it seems like, I guess, that uh, comedy kind of took off in a weird way where people like to talk about their friendships with dudes. <laughs> Don't with guy filmmakers. Like, like this, right yeah, here. Yeah, very much. We're very friendly. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I guess, and, and it was nice, I remember when I saw 40 Year, 40 Year Old Virgin, I was just like, holy shit, somebody made a movie like I like to make, and that was kind of, that was cool, and then that dude got really successful at it, and then I was like, I ain't cool anymore. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't even a joke, that was really like that. <laughs> Shouldn't have laughed. Call up people and be like, why is it like that? Like, anyway. Anyway, well, it's uh, 2009. Yes. 10th anniversary of Dogma. Yeah. Which. <laughs> what, oh, I see you, you relinquished this time. Uh, this is the, the, the core? Yeah, yeah, okay. No, 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 Good. 
Center stage? Okay. There we go. Okay. People. So it's it's ten years since since um, uh, and if we're gonna give you the, if, me like I'm giving it to you, but if the Vail Film Festival is giving you a Renegade Award, I feel like that's kind of a appropriate film to talk about a little bit because I, I think that's kind of a, a very Renegade moment of yours. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about maybe anything that you think about now when you look back ten years ago at that film, recollections, and maybe what you think about the film now when you watch it, you you, you think about how it came out. Um, I think that basically when when we started, <laughs> when we started doing that, there was, uh, there was a, a big part of me that was like, oh, I'm still the kid that went to Catholic school for eight years and used to laugh when I would preach. was like, blessed to see who comes in the name of the Lord, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> I just kind of start writing about that. And kind of, I was having a crisis of faith at the time, and I was like, hey, man, I work chasing Amy it was all about me working out my male sexual insecurity. So I figured dogma would be all about me working out my religious issues and shit like that and, and try to do it and entertain people at the same time. I like it, I saw it fairly <laughs> easy. Last uh, 10 minutes of the film, and it's, um, I wish we had a little more money to do it. It was rather ambitious for the budget, but I, I, you know, some of the action sequences, there's a fight in the, in the train that looks like a fight between three of them. <laughs> it's a slap fight. <laughs> but I like it, it holds the test of time, I think. The audience agree on <laughs> I just, I don't know if people in the back can see you were stroking my fingers while you were doing it. Like, like, this with like, my what? Okay. Yeah. You're a good hand. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> um, any, any thoughts on, uh, you know, because, you know, the, the uh, topic of independent film, obviously, coming up on the stage a few times. Any thoughts on the current state of it? And, 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 and I don't know, I, I, it's a pretty broad question, obviously. Yes. Um, um, yeah, I, it's, it, I mean... <laughs> Every once in a while, you're like, it doesn't quite exist anymore right. like it used to. But then yeah. you come to a place like this, and you're like, oh, they're giving out awards to movies that you don't know. That must be an independent film, you know what I'm saying? So it's still alive and well out there. It's just weird. It's different than when, when I got in. When I, obviously, when I got into the independent film, anybody could get in. Now, you know, they, after me, they're like, shit, we let retarded kids in? <laughs> <laughs> Closed ranks, and it's much harder for everybody else to get in. So I'm sorry, I ruined the curve for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know we're, we're supposed to take questions from the audience as well in a minute, so people can maybe start thinking of questions. And uh, I'm sure you'll be more comfortable with that. You won't have to hold my hand anymore. Okay. <clears throat> you're, you're okay? <laughs> Do you, can, this is, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I'm really curious to hear about the, the, the upcoming movie yeah. as a fan. Can I hear just a little bit about, you know, what uh, attracted you to the project? First film, you haven't, you know, the idea at least hasn't yeah. come to you. I don't know if it's you're rewriting it at all. I'm not, I'm not really, yeah. So maybe first, you can talk about it. There's this uh, flick I'm going to direct next, and it's the first uh, flick that I, I didn't write. It's uh, so not a film, it's very much a movie, but it's a good movie. And I was kind of attracted to it because it's kind of a movie that my old man would have taken me to when I was a kid. The older you get, that's what you think about more. Like when I was an angry young man, it was all about like, yeah, man, I want to make these movies my movies that stay what I want to say because what I have to say is real fucking important. And then uh, the older you get, you're just like, oh, I just don't want to die one day. <laughs> so, and at that point, too, it's like suddenly you start thinking about shit like... So this is your synecdoche to York, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Much. This is me sitting there going like, you know, one day I'm going to die, and when I die, I don't want to sit there going, fuck, why didn't I make that Bruce Willis movie when I had the chance? Because <laughs> Bruce Willis is in it. Bruce Willis and Tracy Morgan are in it. So I was just like, I'm going to fucking go make that movie. And, you know, the odd thing is, it's it's the first studio, it's for Warner Brothers, so I'm like, I, and, and I'm going to get paid like a son of a bitch this time. <laughs> and, and oddly enough, I walked into Warner Brothers, and they're just like, this is a low-budget movie. You know how to do those. I was like, yeah, I do. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody's kind of inspiring. I mean, it's not, you know, granted, there's a lot more money in that movie than in you know, almost every other movie, every other movie I've ever made, but not that much more. Mm -hmm. um, and it, everybody is kind of pulling together to do it, cinching the belts, like everybody's giving up a lot of their, their salary to do it. It's kind of inspiring. I keep saying, I'm like, this is like a low budget movie. And they're like, yeah, it is a low budget movie. <laughs> I'm like, that's the highest budget movie I've ever done. They're like, still a low budget movie. To us. <laughs> One dude's like, I did I Am Legend. I'm like, all right, so this is a low budget movie for you. 